Holy smokes. This place is loaded with fish. I've never seen so many fish in one spot. Dude, we gotta get the line in the water. We gotta try to both fish some of these fish out of here. Holy smokes. Man, it's nasty walking through here. I mean, the grass is fine. I don't mind the grass. It's actually pollinated right now, so you could probably eat some of the pollen, get some protein, make sure it's not unedible grass species. Most grass species are edible. Some of them are not. But the stinging nettle in here are head height now. Well, I should say about waist high height. And they're actually stinging me with every step, going right through my pants. Thankfully, I got log sleeve shirts, but I could feel it on the back of my hand. So I am trying to walk in the tall grass. So the nettle part of the stinging nettle is actually on the underside of it. There's a whole bunch of little bristles and those bristles have formic acid in them and that puts it in under your skin. It's kind of like a fire ant. It doesn't hurt too, too bad, but some people react very, very poorly to it and it can lead to a really bad rash. For me, not too bad. Here, I'll even risk it. The worst is when you get it on the back of your hand. Ouch, that really stings. We're still out here in the wilderness trying to make a living, doing the survival fishing. Scott, Scott, we've got our uh, Failed projects, projects in the work, and projects in mind. So today's more projects in mind kind of thing. You can see the bent spear. Go back, check out the beginning of the series. Uh, I'll put it down in the playlist down below. But uh, spear worked pretty good. Did not stand this test of time, however. So it's a little bent. So what we're out here doing is try to buff up our gear and try to catch the next meal. So I'm thinking today is a survival bow. Uh, we started on a survival bow here. We can't bend this for snot. It's probably about a 200 pound draw right now. <laughs> I can't even bend probably it. Probably about 400. <laughs> Maybe 400. We couldn't put a string on there if we tried. But we're going to keep working at that. But today we're going to work on some softer material. There's lots of alder trees around here. And as a kid, that was my preferred material to build a bow. And I used to build bows all the time. Every summer I'd have some kind of alder bow. It's not going to be a super strong bow with a strong draw, but I don't think for fish we need one. So we're going to harvest some alder, skin them down, hopefully get a flex in it right away so we can get more food in our bellies. Well over my head now. But we're just looking for a patch of alders. Alders are fast growing weed species, it grows in wetland areas, edge of creeks, edge of lakes. That's an alder here. This is the ideal stuff for smoking. You put that on a fire and smoke fish, it's the most delicious fish you'll ever had. If you could do it overnight, all the better. The green stuff. So we're gonna try to find a straight one with not too many branches to use. So there's one really good branch in here I can see. So there's more than one, there's actually a couple. I can see through here. Perfect thickness to make a bow out of. Just shave down the sides and should be good to go right away. All right, well Scott's struggling to get his alder, alder bush out. We do actually have some modern tools with us besides just knives. We've been carting these along on our adventures. So I'm going to actually use the fold out Boreal 21 saw here. It's going to make short work. I just want to be very careful about what I select as far as a straight tree. I don't know how thick I want to go either. It's the Boreal 21. It's available on my website. Shameless plug. Thewittedbeardsman.com slash shop. We got the spices there, we got everything there. Go check it out, buy something, help me out. So this is about the perfect thickness for an arrow. It's not perfect, it's got lots of little branches, so we'll see if we use that one. We may not, but I wanna find something that's straight-ish without branches in the way. Yeah, Scott's touching one here because I'm eyeballing this one too. I think this is the one here. I'll start down nice and low. There's some imperfections in here and that might affect us in the long run, but we'll give it a go. See what kind of flex we can get out of it. So Scott showed you how to cut a tree with a knife, uh, with a chopping force. That's, that works good too. You can also grind it edges out and then break and bend. The saw is obviously preferable. It works a lot better. Let's just start it out at maximum length. It's not gonna, it's not going to end up being this long. But we can always make it shorter. How does that look like? It's even got a, be a bend in it already, even though we don't really want to bend. It's got lots of flex in there. It doesn't feel like it's going to break on me. Strip it down. 
that'll help it dry and stiffen it up over time stronger but also of course more brittle so i, I did mention that we have a, a 400 pound bow and i'm not joking this is a 400 pound bow like if i put my weight on here i can barely like i can barely move it actually i just heard a crack there <laughs> that's not good so over time what we've been doing is just taking the axe and removing more material as we have the energy because it's been quite the project the problem with this is it's a maple tree and it's not like ideal material to be making a bow out of you could make a bow out of maple so you want to get that tiller right so you don't have any points where it's like more fragile than others people that made primitive bows they made, they had the materials that were kind of like this ready to go so we'll we'll revisit this is all the stuff that we have here on this survival experience is is coming along with us for the journey to see if we can repurpose it later this is the spear made out of um barbed wire you'll have to watch the other video to find out how that one worked on carp we did use it on carp and we have one more here it's a uh it's going to be a gig so we managed to get a hole in there and i'll show you in a second there's a piece of metal a fork that we salvaged from the scrap pile we also salvaged a bit of rubber from the pile which we can use to mount it and frog season, bullfrog season is about open. Well, this could be used for fishing or hunting frogs. <laughs> you can see how this is kind of a half failed, half working, half not working project. All the tips need to be sharpened as well. So this is not for today. This is for a future episode. We've also got some gorge hooks and some primitive hooks we're hoping to use today on the fishing adventure. But we want to get something ready to be able to shoot fish too. So having two options to get fish rather than just one. The first option when it's something that's cobbled together usually doesn't work in our experience. You can see the, the flex you get right away from that alder branch. I loved using these when I was a kid. Like I grew up across the road was a swamp just like this and there was a duck pond and everything and I'd go out every morning try to sneak out there and catch the ducks. I never managed to but I had a slingshot one time and I planned like go out really super early before sun was up and just camp out there wait for them to d jump in there. I never got them. I think I might have sneak, snuck up on them through the bush one time and they would always flush out of the pond. But back in the swamp it was all alder bush like this so there's unlimited resources for making spears and bows and everything. I think one time I did make a bow. I snuck up on a rabbit. Did you ever see, there was a there was a movie way back when, I think it was like what, a trapping movie, and the guy was trying to outsmart a beaver or something like that, and he finally snuck up on the beaver and he had the gun sights up on him, and he was just about to pull the trigger and then he felt sorry for the beaver. That was me, except I was imitating what I saw on TV. Now I would have just shot it and ate it. <laughs> but at the time I was like, oh, it's right there, and I could finally shoot it. Like, okay, we've had a good battle. Of course, it would never play out like that in real life, but yeah. <laughs> if I was hungry, I would have shot it for sure. It'd be like Elmer Fudge, could never <laughs> get the trigger pulled. Yeah, you'd wonder if you would actually do it, if you could finally do it. If you'd just be like, oh, it was the battle I appreciated rather than the actual, you know, trying to get a meal out of the deal. I want to see if this is going to work, and I'm sure you guys do too. You guys think we're going to be able to get a fish with this? If our ancestors could have done it, we can do it. It's just going to take some time and practice. But we'll get there, and we'll make it happen. I notched out a couple grooves here. One on this side, and one on this side. Kind of made an X pattern in it, and then kind of notched it down. So it will hopefully sit in. Can only hope. Uh, and then I cut off a piece of 550 cord. Then I'm gonna wrap this around. This side I'm just gonna tie a nice normal knot, granny knot, whatever you wanna call it. Put it over, step through, go down, put your rope in, tighten it up. I might have to redo this knot, I can already tell it's gonna slip, but yeah. There you go. Got your bowl set up again. That looks much better tiller straight out of the bank than working on a piece of freaking maple. Yeah, and it, and it pulls back too. All right, well, Scott's a lot faster than me, mostly because I'm always farting around with the camera. The funny thing is I, I can't actually string up my own bow. Scott's gonna have to string it up for me. I'm gonna have to bring him around with me all the time. Scott, string up my bow, I need to get a fish. <laughs> <laughs> Yelp. <laughs>
<laughs> you afraid it's gonna explode? Almost. At full draw, it might be a hundred pounder. <laughs> it's over seventy because my bow's seventy, and that's way harder. Oh, but I only have to do full or half, like half draw. Ouch! <laughs> that, that slapped me really good. I think if I take a little bit off this uh, thicker end here, I'll shrink the rope up and then get a little bit more brace height on there. You got an arrow ready? That's a ridiculous looking arrow. It is, but it'll work. Mine's not terrible, but it's not great it's either. It's a good piece, it just needs to be refined. Yeah, it needs to be refined. It needs a little bit more work. I think these off cuts are gonna be fish bonkers. Boom! Because that's how confident I am I'm actually gonna get a fish. I'm gonna carry a bonker around with me 100 times out of 10. 100 times out of 10, no. 10 times out of 10, 100%. I mix those two up. Wow. This would be nice to have like some bamboo or something, but we don't live in bamboo country. So we're gonna work with the materials we have. My draw length isn't actually that far. So I only need something fairly small. So I could use this one right here and it should hopefully work. And then the question from there on out will be what we're gonna tip it with. But I did save some materials from the junk pile. So we have some barbed wire and hoping that's gonna make a nice sharp tip that we can drive through a fish. That's gonna be key. Not just shooting the fish, penetrating the fish, but also holding on to the fish. Because a straight piece of wood, it's gonna slip right off. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Woo! That shot fairly straight and good. Shoots pretty good. Should be able to get something with it. Got a nice bend in there. Perfect. You scared? A little bit? Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Put your glasses on. Safety glasses time. Ah! <laughs> Full arrow broke or? No, that no. was just that was just my wrist. It did break the knock notch again. The notch. It sounded like he had actually like snapped the arrow. It was just a string hitting off of his hand. Dry fired it. <laughs> no, needs a better knock. Yeah. I think for our experiment, we should probably find some uh, legit arrows too, just to see if like we can actually make just the bow. Because I really do believe the arrows are going to give us the most amount of trouble here. Especially finding something that's going to stick into a fish. Dude, it's, it's a lot more challenging than you think. Like, a lot of credit to primitive people who would have made these primitive tools and used them effectively. Scott's in the grocery store. It's a lumber yard. Back in the lumber yard. Oh, that's There's nice. an arrow for you. That's a nice arrow, thanks. Nice, long, straight one. I think this is going to be the hardest part. I don't know if I said this before, but the arrow, I think it's going to be the most critical and the most difficult to fabricate here in the woods. So I added this little piece into here just to uh, make a little bit of a notch. If you guys can see that or not. But it's to, uh, so I can seat the 550 cord into this. It might work like an actual knock. So my knock actually worked, as you can see. It's stuck in. So now I can actually just grab the string and not the arrow at all. And I should be able to shoot no problem. Let's see. So it's stuck in the ground. Trunk my bow string up so that we can have at least a little bit of brace height. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually leave it strung up for as long as I can. I'm not gonna undo it. See if we can get this strung up without breaking it. Oh, that's, that's a little bit of flex. <laughs> Dang that it. broke. <laughs> uh, I wasn't really frustrated, I was just kidding. But a uh, little, little too aggressive on that one. Hey, it's got lots of flex now. <laughs> now it's perfect. <laughs> it's still got lots of backbone on there. Scott's definitely got me beat on the bow, but I think I gotta beat him on the arrow. I got a nice long arrow. It's uh, it's not, well it's drying. It's in the process of drying. Once I removed the bark, bark, it started to dry and die. So what I'm doing is as it's drying, I'm straightening it and it should hold its form as long as I pay attention to it. If I don't, it's gonna banana. I don't know a lot about how primitive people made arrows, but I'm guessing it probably would have been just a tree. They would just cut it and they would have had an arrow. That would have been their specific material for it. Maybe it would have been a large weed species or something like bamboo some other material like that, like a tree that's just ready to go. Maybe I need to take a trip to Zimbabwe, hang out with the Bushman. <laughs> Con Bushman. <laughs> I 
I'm not making fun. I'm, <laughs> I'm appreciating the culture. Demonetize. <laughs> I think we'll just sharpen up the point a little bit and then we're gonna get that wire set in place there. And then we have our barbed wire. What I'm gonna do is try to fasten it on to the end here, something like that. Something like how we did the first spear in the first video. And that I'm hoping is going to be enough to hold on to the fish. Pretty sweet looking tip. What do you guys think of that? I think that's, I think that'll work. I mean, it's pretty bendy, but a fish is not a strong animal. I kind of feel like this is gonna break off, but that's okay, I don't mind that. And then what I'll do then is I'll sharpen this up. And so 20 pounds of pressure is all you need really to get that into a fish. So we're gonna pretend the fish is the bushes here. A nice long shot. Oh, I gotta get that. I gotta figure out where it, we're shooting off my hand here, so. It's a little tricky, a little tricky. It's not, doesn't, of course, it doesn't wanna stay in the freaking knock. Here we go. <laughs> oh my freaking arm. I slapped my arm again. I was turning the whole bow sideways like that. And then right where this V is in here, I was resting the arrow down in that. And I was keeping my hand back here. So the arrow was actually up here a little bit more. Right there? Yeah. Hold her up. <sighs> you gotta hold the bow flatter. <laughs> and now put your arm in the way. That freaking hurt so bad. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> Got a freaking welt. Do you want to switch? No, it's good. I can I can do this. <laughs> I'm not scared. <laughs> okay. Oh. Can I give up? You're the bow man. I'm out. Here, we'll switch and I'll take a shot. <laughs> yep. You gotta make the notch a little deeper so it sticks in a little better. And then we'll be good. Dude, I hear I hear rescue service. We're over here, over here. Get the smudge fire going, we're gonna get rescued. I'm kidding. It's not a real survival situation. You guys have been fooled all along. We're not that far from civilization the whole time we're making this thing. They're gonna come and get us, we're over here. I don't know, why do people yell at the helicopter? The helicopter's not gonna hear you screaming. You never know, there could be a gunner <laughs> sitting outside of it. A gunner. <laughs> And then people stand up straight, up and down, when you should be laying down like a starfish. They're not gonna see it. Take your shirt off, lay in the grass, get in those stinging nettles. The plane's not coming. So we're gonna get that notch cut in a little deeper and we're gonna go find some food. Cause as always, I'm getting hungry. Holy smokes. This place is loaded with fish. I've never seen so many fish in one spot. Dude, we gotta get the line in the water. We gotta try to both fish some of these fish out of here. Holy smokes, I've never seen so many fish all in one spot. And I thought my trout spot was good. Oh man, there's tons and tons of fish schooled in this little river system here. It looks like they're kind of trapped. They're landlocked in this little area where they can't get up river anymore. Let's see what we can do here. I think Scott's gonna probably drop the gorge hook in there or the regular hook first before we stir them up too badly. And then we'll try a little bit with the bow and see what happens. Man, there's, it's loaded. It's absolutely freaking loaded with fish. Thank you. 
can feel them. I can feel them. Oh, I spit it out. Oh, I got him. I got him. Oh, no. <laughs> Dude. Maybe that's what we got to do. That didn't work. We had one on, but it was not like, I don't know, it wasn't it wasn't the right way to do the gore trip. We let it sit there for like five minutes. Just let it sit, let it sit, let it sit, let it sit. Finally pulled in, the gore hook came out and another fish grabbed it right away. And then Scott instinctively, instinctively, instinctively set the hook and it actually stayed in the fish long enough to get a pretty decent fight, but then it popped out. So I think that's it for that. We'll try, uh, we'll try the regular hook and see if that doesn't work here. And if that doesn't work, I'm gonna slug the this the uh, bow in there because we gotta get something to work. I'm I'm starving. All right, so Scott's still messing around there, see if he can't get himself a fish. I'm gonna tie on uh, one of our hooks here if I can. They don't. It's kind of tricky because they don't have eyelets, so they don't really tie on like you would think a normal hook would tie on. Just get that whole thing covered up. There we go. And we'll poke it through at the end here. Bury that thing completely inside that hook there. I mean, that looks like a pretty legit hook. We'll see if it actually works. All right, so we got the other, this is the bendy hook. It's sharper, I hope it works like a hook. At least if the fish swallows it, it should catch on like the gill plate, the gills, something like that. But we don't know until we try. The fish has got it in his mouth right now. It falls out, it just fell out right away. Another one grabbed it, fell out. Another one grabbed it, fell out. Another one grabbed it, fell out. They're fighting over it. It's not, it's just not staying in, it's not staying in there. I could try to set it. Throw it back in there and we'll try to set it. That's got me under the log. There we go, we got one. Oh, shoot! I had it, but it knocked right into the log. And it freaking broke my hook right off too. Shoot! Thankfully we got another one. There we go. Oh, I missed him. Shoot. There's another guy. Another one. Another one. Oh, I missed him again. Oh, I lost my worm. Shoot. Well, that guy's got it. There we go. There we go. We got him. Oh, not the log again. Freaking log. I gotta let him go. How did he get wrapped around the log? Did he go all the way around it? How did he do that? You're probably in a notch in it. Shoot. There's a knot, oh, there's a knot in the log there. There, he's out. Oh, we got him. We got him. We got him. Oh, stay on. Stay on. Stay on. Yeah. <laughs> he got him. <laughs> Freaking got him. Dude, with the hook too. But it's perfect, right in the, right in there. Hooked right in the throat, perfect. Right there. Oh, that's all it took. Oh shoot, stay on buddy. There, there we go. <laughs> Man, that hook worked so good, I couldn't even get it out of the freaking fish. Well, hey, that worked. That worked, that freaking worked. I'm surprised, I'm speechless to be honest, man, but that freaking worked. That's awesome. There we go, we got them cleaned up. There's our fish for all our hard work. We managed to get a freaking trout with a freaking hook that we made out of freaking barbed wire fencing. So wheat. So that's a win for the hook. I would not recommend gorge hooks though, but if you could get a piece of wire, bend it, sharpen it, you could probably catch yourself a fish. Like if I don't sink too badly and I have a, a solid surface, I can definitely walk up to the fish and crank one. There's enough fish in there that are just stuck with that fence that we could, lots of different ways we can get a fish out of there. I'm just gonna tie this up to the top of the bow here so that I don't have to worry about losing the line. And then we're gonna throw our line on here just like, like this. We should be able to get a shot here. Oh, let's see how solid this bottom is. Oh, it's actually not too bad. It's very slippery though. It's, oh, it's a little sinky. Don't, not gonna lie. And it's very cold and it's very slippery. Whew. Okay, got a solid spot. There is a trout, like literally, it's been here the whole time. I don't think you guys can see it, but it's like literally right there. Oh, and it, started, it just moved. 
Oh, it's stuck. It was stuck. It, it, still stuck? it was stuck on the line. No, it got free. Shoot. I spooked it out of the way. Dang it. That was my chance. All right, let's see how wet we're going to get. They get into the thickest stuff where they can't really escape here. Because I'm going to get, I'm not going to shoot. I'm going to get like right up to them, hopefully. <laughs> not a chance. <laughs> no, they are not going to let me get up close to them. I'm not sure that this bow is going to have a whole lot of power, but we're going to try. Oh, this thing's got like no power left in it at all. Oh. I want to show you guys out of the water what it's got left got like hardly anything left like it seems like it's got penetration but it really doesn't it's actually since we strung it up it's cracked <laughs> so I mean the alder this was a good ready-made bow first day but now it's just garbage so anyway I'm glad we got to try it now we know we can't we have to use good woods if we want to actually get a fish with this but thankfully I've got my other bow here, so I'm going to give that a try because I want to actually bow fish a fish. There we go. There we go. We got that guy. We got two. We got a double. <laughs> so that's the difference between primitive technology and modern technology. I mean, freaking rip a double. Well, if you guys haven't figured out where we are, we're actually at Linden Trout Hatchery Trout Farms. Check the link below, get in touch with Clark, find out if he's opening the pond this year. You know, based on the closures, it may not actually happen. He's going to sell some fillets, maybe, although it's limited ser limited service right now, limited supply. <laughs> this bow's going to break. <laughs> I was tempted to just try on this one here. Did it work? It actually worked. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> it freaking worked. <laughs> I would actually went in and it's holding. No way. Dude, it actually works. <laughs> it actually freaking holds onto it. That's pretty cool. I'd say. Well, that's a result anyway. I mean, you can't argue with that. The bow, epic failure. The gourd chuck, epic failure. But the hooks actually worked. Well, we knew they would work because we got them to work before. So, no surprises there. If you guys want to do survivalist stuff, make some hooks, some J-hook, find some metals, that's the way to go. We'll keep at the gorge hook, maybe there's some other ideas we can come up with to try out later on another episode of Survival Fishing.